everybody. Happy afternoon. How are you feeling? Good. Good. Awesome. My name is Miss Alex and I am an interpreter. I'm like a ranger at Crystal Cove State Park, which is a California state park. It's right north as you're going out of town on PCH around El Moro Elementary. How many and one of my jobs at Crystal Cove State Park is to share information about the ocean animals that live in our Marine Protected Area, or MPA. We're going to be talking about one of the most fascinating animals under the sea. Who can tell me? What are we going to learn about? The octopus. So these are magicians of the underwater world. They're chameleons of the sea. And squid, octopus, and cuttlefish all live in a group of animals called cephalopods. Cephalopod stands for uh, head and foot, because most of them have bulbous heads with arms or tentacles coming out. Just so you guys know, octopus, how many arms does an octopus have? Eight. What about a squid? Eight. Very good. And what else? What else do they have? Another word, I'm looking for another word. Tentacles. Tentacles, very good. So octopus have eight arms and squid have eight arms and two tentacles, just so you guys know. Now, how many species of octopus do you think there are in the whole world? There are actually 300 species of octopus and they live in all of the world's oceans. And the smallest octopus is called a star-suckered pygmy octopus. Do you guys want to see the smallest octopus? Yes! Yeah. Okay, so here we have the smallest octopus, or the wolfy octopus. Now, it looks big in this photo, but everybody show me your pinky. They're actually less than an inch long, and they weigh less than a penny. Can you imagine? Now, on the flip side, what is the world's largest octopus? That would be our giant Pacific octopus. These are the largest octopuses and um, the largest one recorded, the internet has many different answers for that, but the one that I think is the most credible, the most realistic, the largest one was 20 feet arm span, 20 feet, and they, it weighed 200 pounds. Now I need an octopus arm volunteer. Who wants to be a volunteer for me? Who's somebody I haven't called on? I haven't called on you. Do you want to be an octopus arm volunteer? All right, I'm one arm of, of an octopus. You know how birds have wingspans? Octopus have um, arm, arm spans. So I'm gonna be one arm of an octopus. You're gonna to have to maybe go through these people because we want to see how long this octopus was. <laughs> so here you go. I'm gonna take this, now pull it back, pull it back. Maybe you have to go out of the room. Where is 20 feet? Keep on going. And my measuring tape ran out. <laughs> That's how long, this is 16 feet. So imagine four more feet and that was the largest giant Pacific octopus. Imagine an octopus that size in this library right now. Wouldn't that be so wild? Thank you so much. Everybody give her a round of applause. Our <laughs> volunteer octopus arm, so amazing. Now, octopuses are known for their adaptations. Have you guys heard of adaptations before? Okay, so adaptations are like animal superpowers. And you guys, adaptations are inherited traits that plants and animals use to survive in their environment. You guys have adaptations. Let's see your fingers. We have our fingers for grasping things. Feel your hair. Most of us have hair to keep our head warm, to keep us from getting sunburned. Now, here comes our octopus. This is my magical mystery animal box. So octopus are really smart animals. They're intelligent. They're known for playing games and problem solving. They're also known for their defense mechanisms, the ways they protect themselves. So they can squirt out a purple cloud of ink, propel into the darkness away from a predator like a seal or a shark, and they don't have a backbone. Everybody feel your spine that holds us up? We have a backbone, so we are called vertebrates. What do we call animals that don't have a backbone? Are called invertebrates, invertebrates. So that means they can squish into any tight space the size of their mouth. And underneath their body, they're covered in hundreds, sometimes thousands of suckers. And they use these suckers to grip onto the rocks when the waves are crashing. Also to move around, that's called locomotion. And also, did you know they use their suckers to taste? Like we use our tongue to lick a lollipop. They can use their suckers to taste or smell a fish or a crab or a clam. 
and <coughs> they only eat meat. What do we call animals that only eat meat? River? Yeah. Carnivore, very good. So squid and octopus have a hard beak, like a bird or a parrot, and they use that to crunch down on crabs and scallops and fish. So crabs wear their skeleton on the outside of their body, called an exoskeleton, so our squid and octopus need this hard beak to crunch down on their food. All right, now I'm gonna show you the species of octopus that we can see here in Southern California on our beaches. If you guys go tide pooling, have you guys ever seen an octopus before in our tide pools here? It's called a two-spot octopus. And it's called a two-spot octopus because it has two fake eyeballs underneath its real eyes. Do, do you see this little blue spot by its siphon? Yeah. So that's a false eyeball and it's going to grow very large and make the animal appear bigger to other predators. So what do we call it when plants and animals blend in with their surroundings? Camouflage. So how, I always get this question, how does an octopus change its colors, right? So octopus have cells spread out all over their skin called chromatophores, and there are little sacks of color inside of each cell, like orange and brown and purple. Here I have orange and green. So inside these cells, they can use their brain to stretch or contract these little jelly-filled they're colored filled sacs. So see how these colors change colors as I squeeze them? The octopus uses their brain and they can manipulate every cell to change colors to blend in with their surroundings. Isn't that wild? All right. Now, where do you guys think we see octopus here in Laguna Beach or in Orange County? Where do you usually find them? Are they back in the back country on the trails? <laughs> yeah. The ocean. What kind of habitat in the ocean? A habitat is natural home for plants and animals. Tide pools. So I'm sure you guys love tide pooling just as much as I do. So before I end, I just want to talk about the ways that we can be really respectful when we visit the tide pools because their home is exposed to all of us playing around, right? What if you were in your home and that's their home and a stranger walked in the front door and started touching all your stuff? That wouldn't be cool, right? So we wanna be friendly giants when we visit their habitat. So these are the rules we follow in our marine protected area so we can help protect all the animals. So we never um, remove, we don't try to collect the animals or take home shells. Shells are homes for other animals like hermit crabs. And we don't try to take the animals home because we don't have what they need to survive. So they're not going to live and that's not fun for anyone. Also, we never wanna pick up the animals, right? We don't, and also we wanna walk gently so we always watch where we're stepping in the tide pools. We don't step in the pools and we don't even turn over rocks. But lastly, you wanna have fun because the more that you have fun engaging with nature in the outside world, the more you're going to learn why we want to help protect precious ocean habitats like tide pools and this amazing animal, the octopus. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, that was my little presentation before we're gonna actually draw the octopus. I did just wanna walk around and I'll show you guys. I have a real octopus in here. It's no longer alive. I'm Elizabeth McGee and today we're going to be doing an octopus. For this project you'll need paper to sketch and a pencil, markers and crayons for coloring, tape and a glue stick, scissors and bubble wrap, and something to wrap the bubble wrap around. In this case I'm using a cork. And colored construction paper, any color that you think will look like an ocean for your art. So we'll start out with a very non-octopus shape, which is just a flat oval, kind of like a circle that's squished. And we're going to add a dome for the top of the octopus's head. And we're going to draw four lines coming off that oval to be the legs. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect those lines to the body because these are going to be the front four legs of the octopus. And since an octopus has eight legs, there's also going to be four legs that'll be behind. So you want to keep the legs about the same width 
You don't want to have like two little legs and two big legs. Try and keep it consistent. But a little bit of variation is okay. So those will be our front legs. And now we're gonna do the back legs. But before we do that, we're gonna erase where the legs meet the body. And we can also erase the top part of this oval. And now we have kind of the beginning of an octopus shape. And for the four legs that are gonna be behind, they're not gonna join up. They're just gonna kind of start. So it's just gonna continue behind that leg. So he has twisty legs, kind of like the water is moving them around. And something to keep in mind is the more complex shapes in between the legs are gonna make it more complex to cut out later. So we got one, two, three, and one more. So now our octopus has eight legs. And we'll add an eye, and the eye is very low. So the eye is way down here. And the other eye, you can't really see it. It's gonna be on the other side of the head here and we'll add a little line for that eye. So that'll be like the basic body. And from here, this is where we're going to make our stamp to decorate it. So we're gonna get the bubble wrap and the bumpy side is what we're going to use to stamp. So to make a stamp, just put something inside it and you'll use tape And you don't have to tape it up. I just find that it's easier to use. So now I have a stamp. And I don't have a stamp pad, but I don't need one. So I can use the markers to draw on the bubble wrap, and that's what I can put on the paper. So I will use orange. So I'm gonna color my stamp with the marker. And I wanna make sure to get lots of color on there. And I'm just gonna stamp everywhere. I'm not gonna worry about the background. And be careful not to press too hard, because if you press too hard, you can pop the bubbles and then the stamp won't work as well. So you wanna be a little bit gentle, just pressing hard enough so those circles will happen. And you can use this trick for lots of other things besides just an octopus. It just adds a nice texture and you can experiment with lots of other textures too. You can use different types of plastic and even rolled up cellophane makes an interesting look. And once I have enough texture on there, I'll move to the next step. So now I'm going to color my octopus. And I think I'm gonna use blue and pink, but you can use whatever combination of colors that you want. So I'm going to make the underneath part of the octopus pink. So I'm going to go in and do half of this leg with pink. So one side will be pink. And the other side will be blue. And I don't have to be too careful with my outline since I'm going to be cutting it out later. And maybe this leg will be all pink since it's one of those legs that are behind. So we're seeing more of the under part of the octopus on those behind legs. So I'm going to color all those legs we did behind.
and all these front legs I'm gonna do blue. And you can see how the marker is still showing through and it's making an interesting texture on our octopus. And with crayons, if you color in all one direction, it's gonna make a smoother color. So if you want your octopus to look slippery and smooth, you might wanna practice coloring in one direction. And you see how I'm not being careful and I'm coloring over the lines? It's because it won't matter since we're cutting it out. So since it's easier for me to color smoothly going outside the line, that's what I'm gonna do. And I'll go around his eye. And maybe we'll give him a yellow eye. So now I'm gonna cut it out. This will take a second. So now that I've cut all the outside parts, there's still a few that are inside. So rather than cut through the leg, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna gently fold the paper and give it a little snip in that empty area. So I'm not folding it hard, I'm just giving it a little curl so it won't get a crease. And what it does is it makes a little hole so I can fit my scissors into that space. And from there I can cut that inside shape. And that's the trick for cutting shapes inside other shapes. It'll get easier with practice. And the first couple times might not be perfect, so just keep trying. So here we go. So you can see how it goes through. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. All right, so now we have our octopus cut out. So this is where the different colored paper will come in handy. It depends if you wanna have your octopus in the deep, dark ocean, kind of the middle ocean, or more toward the surface. So this one would be great for a real octopus because he's kind of camouflaged into the paper. So it'd be hard for a predator to see him, but we actually want people to look at our octopus. So I might go with either this middle blue or this dark blue. I kind of like this dark blue, so I think I'll use this one. So to glue this octopus, we're going to start with a scratch piece of paper. We're going to flip the octopus over. So the best way to glue is to glue all the way up to the edge. So some of this glue is going to be on the scrap piece of paper. This will make him stick better to our construction paper. So if you just put glue in the center of the octopus, his legs will kind of curl off the paper, which could be cool. It would make him look kind of 3D, but I want him flat on there for mine. So with lots of glue on him, we're gonna move that scrap paper out of the way. So maybe I'll put him here, press him down. So now we can start to add a few things to his world. Maybe we'll add some dark bubbles. And maybe deep down here there's some rocks. And at this point you can use your crayons or your markers for doing the background.
maybe I'll add some seaweed. And way deep down under the sea in the dark, it's kind of hard to see. He almost looks like he's lit up by a photographer's flash, some diver photographing underwater. Maybe I'll add a few more darker bubbles with marker. And I'll use the markers for some outlines on the octopus. Maybe I'll darken his eyeball a little bit. So there we have an octopus. So I hope you had a lot of fun doing your octopus and you can use this technique to do other fish as well or other sea creatures or even coral. So bubble wrap and trash, a cool art supply.